Clause 20 of Bank Contract 2018 is about the insurance. This is an extension to the Clause 18 related to the liability of the contractor to the employer in terms of the injuries to the person or loss and damage of the property. We know that there is a need for the contractors to have the insurance to cover those. Clause 20 is rather long. We have quite a number of clauses and the relevant statements you may refer to the PAN contract 2018. What we see here, clause 20, we have 20A, 20B, and 20C. In front of these clauses, we have two stars here. It means that the clauses 20A, 20B, and 20C may be strike out as appropriate. Let us first look at what are those. First is clause 20A. It is about the insurance of new buildings or works by the contractor. Clause 20B is about the insurance of new buildings or work by the employer. And Clause 20C is the insurance of existing building or extensions by the employer. The insurance here refers to the contractor or risk insurance, which is also known as the CAR. The meaning of striking out the Clause 20A, 20B and 20C as appropriate is that there will be at least one of these clauses not relevant. It is especially for Clause 20A and 20B. Both are referring to the same insurance. The difference is who is the person to take up and maintain the relevant insurance. It is either the contractor or the employer. For a construction project, one insurance policy is required. It is either take up by the contractor or take up by the employer. As PAN contract is used as the standard form of contract, it gives flexibility to the employer to decide whether the employer would like the insurance to be take up by the contractor or take up by the employer himself. That means in these two, it will be redundant for either one. And Clause 20C is related to the insurance of existing building or extensions, which may be affected by the project. This will need to be taken up by the employer, as the contractor is not relevant with this existing building. This Clause 20C is subjected to the assistance of that building if the project is fully related to the new building or works and there is no existing building within the site. Clause 20C will not be necessary. Under these circumstances, Clause 20C may be struck out. For better imagination, let us look at this table. We have two scenarios here. The first scenario here is the project involves only new building. There is no existing building in the construction site or nearby, which may possibly be affected by the new construction work. Now the relevant clauses it will be either clause 20A or 20B. The employer will need to decide who is the person to take up the relevant insurance. If the employer chooses to do it himself, that means Clause 20A may be strike out. Otherwise, the Clause 20B will be strike out. Therefore, it is either Clause 20A or Clause 20B. Now, in the case that you involve new building, and there are existing building or structure within the construction site, 
or the existing building uh, nearby which may be affected by the project clause 20c will be added under these circumstances it will be either 20a or 20b plus clause 20c having this car insurance taken by both the contractors and the employer is not necessary as one of which will be redundant having this established let us look into the details of the clause 20 first let us look at clause 20a related to the insurance of buildings or works by the contractor this clause shall be applicable when clause 20b is being struck out the clause requires the contractors to take up and maintain a insurance before the commencement of the work it will be joint names of the employer contractor subcontractors and the related parties and this insurance will be the contractor or risk insurance this contractor or risk insurance should cover against the losses or damage by the list of the event here this include fire lightning explosions volcanoes tsunami storm cyclone flood and many other more some may due to the nature some may due to the personal or other geopolitical threats all this has been specified in the PAN contract and the insurance company have a standard contractor or risk insurance policy this contractor or risk insurance is actually covering against any physical loss or damage to the work executed and materials and goods that means any of this may affect the work which has already been done or the materials and goods which are to be used for the relevant works the value insured by this contractor or risk insurance should be at least greater than the contract sum plus the sum of the professional fee for reinstatement plus the sum of debris removal you know that the insured sum cannot be based on the contract sum alone as in the case of any of these events the worst case scenario might involve the reinstatement which require the supervision of the professionals thus the relevant costs should be insured this has not been account in the contract sum same goes to the cost for the debris removal thus it will be additional to the contract sum that to be insured by this contractor or risk insurance this contractor or risk insurance will need to be at least equal or greater than the contract sum this is to cater for the worst case scenario which the entire project has been affected due to any of those incidents next the coverage of the contractor or risk insurance typically exclude those for the construction plan tools and equipment on or hired by the contractor or by any subcontractor the main focus of the insurance is to cover the works materials and goods related to the project this is mandatory and this is bare minimum the coverage for the construction plants tools equipments owned by the contractor those will be optional if the contractor wish to incorporate this within the insurance the contractor will need to top up on his own cost 
and this contractor or risk insurance will need to be valid up to the completion date plus the defect liability period plus additional 3 months. The reason here is this period it will be likely to have the contractor executing the works related to the project. Remember in our previous clauses, the schedule of defect may be submitted to the contractor the latest 14 days after the defect liability period expired and the contractor will need to carry out the rectification works make goods of all those defects this three months provide allowance for the contractors to do the work for the project in the case that there is delay in terms of the completions or delays of the making goods of the defects this contractor or risk insurance will need to be extended one month earlier before the expiry. This is the obligations of the contractor under Clause 20A. This contractor or risk insurance should also include the endorsement as per injuries to the person and loss or damage of property. It nearly cover all. Just now, we mentioned a list of the coverage for a typical contractor or risk insurance. If the employer would like to cover for more events, it should be clearly specified in the contract bills so that the contractor can incorporate the relevant costs during the tendering process. In another word, Additional endorsement other than this, if it is required, will need to be clearly specified in the contract bills. If it is not specified, that means the contractor or risk insurance by default will cover this. This is about the insurance of new buildings of wood by the contractor. In the case that the employer choose to have the insurance covered by the employer side, Clause 20A will be strike out. With that, Clause 20B will be relevant. Since the details are more or less the same, we shall discuss Clause 20, B and C together. This clause 20C is related to the insurance to the existing building if there are any building within the site. Similar principle, now is the employer to have those insured and this needs to be undertaken before the commencement of the work. This insurance against will need to have the joint name between the employer contractor, subcontractors and other relevant parties. As in this insurance involve multi-parties, each of these parties has the right to file a claim against the issuers. And total value of the insurance will need to be at least equal or greater than the contract sum plus the sum of the professional fee for reinstatement plus the sum of debris removal. As in the case of this happen, it may involve the professional service for the reinstatement as well as the service to remove the debris. As a result, this contractor or risk insurance should also cover this. Same like the previous clause, additional endorsement other than this will need to be clearly specified in the contract bills. And this contractor or risk insurance by default exclude cover for the construction plant, tools and equipment on or hired by the contractors of any subcontractor. 
It is unless that the contractor would like those to be covered together and the additional cost for those coverage will have to be on the contractor's own cost. The employer is not obligated to cover for the contractor part by the definitions of pen contract. The validity of this insurance will need to be up to the completion date, the defect liability period plus 3 months. In the case any delay of the completions by the contractor or any delay in terms of the making goods of the defect, this contractor or risk insurance will need to be extended and this should be done more than one month before the expiry of this insurance. The insurance should include the endorsement as per injury to the person as well as the loss and damage of the property. Now, the scenario is Clause 20A has been struck out. That means having the insurance will be the responsibility of the employer. In the case that the employer failed to insure, the contractor may insure on behalf of the employer. The premium paid for those insurance will be added to the contract sum and it is claimable by the contractor. Next, let us look at the claiming process for this insurance. In the case that any loss and damage happen before the practical completions of the work, that means the project has not been completed and some incidents happen, contractor will need to rectify and remove the debris and quickly proceed to complete the work. Contractor cannot wait for the settlements of any insurance claim before proceeding with the work, as this may delay the project. Now, all money received from the insurance should be paid to the employer first. The employer will need to pay professional fee first. The balance is paid to the contractors or the nominated subcontractor by installment under separate certificate to be issued by the architect. That means the payments to the contractor it will be after the cut of the professional fee and is paid progressively to the contractors or nominated subcontractor. The contractors is not entitled to any additional payment for the ratification words other than the monies from the insurance. This should theoretically be covered by the insurance already. The ratification words due to those damage or losses shall not add to the contract sum, otherwise it will be double counted.